You guys ready? Hello, everybody. I would like to call this meeting to order. Clerk Allison, could we please have a roll call? Trustee Donnersberger. Oh, she is on present on the phone. Eileen, can you say that you're here? Eileen. I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> you're here. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Eck. Here. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayor. Here. Trustee Kennedy. Present. Trustee Metz. Here. And Trustee O'Loughlin. Here. And then, of course, Tom. <laughs> Mayor here. Show Thank here. you. Okay. All right, if we could yeah. all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to our meeting. And uh, just so that you know, we are... Uh, recording this meeting and videotaping, and we're broadcasting live on YouTube, uh, IHP TV, uh, and also on Facebook, and then we post a copy after a couple days on our website. Um, first item, we have agendas over there. If anybody didn't get one on the side table, we also have a sign-in. Uh, first item on our report is the mayor's report. Um, Employee anniversaries, Officer Chetamir Bojevic is celebrating four years of service with the village. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Officer Tony Marglaviglia. Uh, we received a wonderful note from a, a parent, a note of appreciation that Officer Marglaviglia helped their son a young driver who had uh, slid off the road in the ice and snowstorm we had a while back. And uh, the officer stayed with their son till the tow truck came and uh, made their son feel very nice. So they sent a note of thank you. So Chief, if you could pass that along, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Wolf Road update. Tonight the village board will be talking about uh, Wolf Road. Uh, the opportunity to approve the amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement, or IGA. This amendment, if approved, will add the increased community involvement and public meetings that many residents have requested. And I urge the uh, Village Board to approve the amending ordinance. Under the uh, pedestrian access master plan, we have three areas in the village, uh, Plainfield Road and Wolf Road, and both are in a phase one study. Both are owned by the county, and the county has stated they will not be pursuing five lanes for either Plainfield or Wolf Road. The third main area is Joliet Road, and that's a state road. And we're waiting on approval to begin phase one of a sidewalk along Joliet Road. The state budget has over $4,300,000 allocated to this project. And just one other note, there have been no discussions, no plans, or no direction to have sidewalks installed on the interior streets of the village. Tonight, uh, I will talk about village goals. Uh, this is something this board started uh, five, six years ago. Uh, each year we try to set village goals that are discretionary spending. And so tonight I will read the goals. Uh, the board will think about the goals and we have little tally sheets and the board will prioritize the goals. We do it in two different formats. And then next month at the March meeting, the board will vote on which goals they want to have the village work on. So the tally sheets are not voting, but they're helping the board allocate which ones. And an example, uh, nobody likes um, the proposal for item B, then we don't have to waste any time next month talking about it. And if everybody likes a different potential village goal, it makes it easier next month. Um, so the goals that we have at this point 
are allocating $10,000 to purchase ring cameras for residents that would care to have one for their protection. And these goals, we use uh, estimates on the cost, and we also, the goal is a short summary. If the board approves that, we spend time to flesh it out, get more detail, and get a better cost before moving forward. The second goal is Blackhawk Park improvements. Uh, ideas like a sports court, better landscaping, a dog run, that's 300,000. The third is comprehensive review of zoning code and land use plan for 100,000. Fourth is a f along the frontage road in Flag Creek, improvements in landscaping, 350,000. House hold stormwater grants at a 50-50 split between the village and residents, 250,000. A new electronic sign for the village, 50,000. Number seven, Sacagawea Park, cement sidewalk, 150,000. Number eight, Sacagawea Park, planting trees and mulch, 20,000. Number nine, Sacagawea Park, upgraded updated playground equipment, $200,000. Item 10, savings for potential Wolf Road landscaping, uh, it's 300,000. That number 10 on the sheet the board has is the same as item 13. And last year the board put away 80,000 allocated to better landscaping on Wolf Road. Uh, item 11 is triangle facade improvements, 350,000. And the last one, 12, triangle facade study for a business development district or a special assessment area for 45,000. Uh, I'll ask the board if there's any new goals or any edits or changes to any of the numbers or any of the projects. Again, the goal is you could either take this sheet and mark it up or uh, we will send one out electronically. Uh, but to get those back within the month. So any changes? I have a comment. Um, with our fiscal year uh, about to end and the new board going to be coming on, not, not some people will be staying on, but some will be leaving. Should we really be doing goals for the new board? Uh, shouldn't this wait until the new board comes on? That's a valid point. Uh, I'd say it's up to the board. Uh, and these are not my goals, so this is the board goals, so up to the board. Um, and we don't have to decide that now, so if you want to think about it for the next meeting, or we don't have to, uh, I forgot to say the approximate money that we have, uh, we believe will be allocated is about 700000 So the board could spend half of it or 100000 whatever, right? It's a board goal. Is that okay to leave it that the board thinks about it and we come back next month? Yeah. And we have a month to respond to, uh, are there any additional changes? Is that what I heard you say? Well, yes, although um, the goal is to try to collect them before the next meeting, right, and then compile them to help our discussion. And so if you wait to the last day to put your goal, somebody may have already voted, right? So um, I don't know what to tell you about, you know, if you have one now, I, we can add it. Uh, any other you okay? I have a comment. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So you have to pass the budget by May 1st. Uh, typically what we do for the large items such as this, we put them in the capital project where the board will be voting on it at a future date anyway. So the board that takes um, their seats at the May meeting will have opportunity to change it or approve it when the time comes. So the main thing is to get the budget passed and have it allocated and as you know, big ticket items, the board has to vote on anyway, so. And, and John, I, I think along that same line, we allocated 80,000 for Wolf Road improvements last year. The new board could say, we don't wanna do that, we wanna do something else. Correct. Are, is this the time to discuss this, or are we gonna have a time later to talk about uh, We're not really having another time to discuss the merits of each, but okay. if there's a new goal or a different amount, again, uh, what I do is I collect these from the trustees, and so it's, again, it's not real uh, scientific, if you will, because we may not do a goal, so why spend hours to flush it out? So 
So I have three just points of clarification. So if, if I did my math correctly uh, on the 12, 13 goals that we have there, they totaled 3.1 million total. We have a budget of roughly 700,000. So allocating the first four at 300,000 a piece doesn't make sense because that's over what we actually have, right? As a clarification, okay. Right. Second one to Trustee Metz's point, I understand what you're saying, but my question would be that if we don't set these goals, would we be giving the next board a potential to have five opportunities to do it? Because four years from now, if they're in the same position and they do goals, if you take this one in the next four years, they've actually had five. So I, I'm not arguing with what you're saying, but I think that if each board has four opportunities to set goals, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Wouldn't they still have four? You're just changing when, when it gets done? Well, if, if it's a lame duck session, to your point, four years from now, are they going to acquiesce and not have goals to do it for the next board? We have no guarantee of that. How about that? Think about that. And again, we're not deciding yes, it. Now. Right. So the other one is on number five, household stormwater grants 50-50. Um, and I'm, I don't know if Andy's going to have a, a point later. I know in previous board meetings we talk about discussions of people that have given us information on stormwater issues. Um, is this only for people that have issues inside their house, or are we looking at landscaping issues and other issues that have, have come up? I would say this up the board to decide, but I think it was part of landscaping. So it's all encompassing on a property, I believe so, okay. yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you all again. I'll have a comment back within a week. You'll have them back within a week? Within a week. Okay, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> uh, so again, these will be sent out electronically. Uh, but you also have the paper with that one edit that 13 was a duplicate. Okay, to finish up the uh, mayor's report, um, police and fire commission, uh, we have a group that meet quarterly. If anybody is interested in joining the fire and police commission, please let me know, the staff or any trustee or, or uh, Chief Kernick in the back. Uh, the deadline for applications is Sunday the 12th. Uh, then we'll work to have a new candidate nominated at the next village board meeting. And last note is um, we have uh, bus new business item G that we're not taking any action on. It's ordinance 2023-07, amendment to the pump house station rehabilitation contract. John will have a report when we get there. Okay, we're at the uh, point in the agenda for public comments. I'd like to ask that everybody keep their comments under three Mr. minutes. Mr. Mayor, uh, I wonder if you could uh, talk a little bit more about applications as to what the process is so that if anybody wants to uh, be on a, a commission or a board, uh, uh, what's, what's uh, involved? We have an application uh, staff has. I think it's on the website, not 100% sure. Uh, but anybody who is interested, they can get the application. If they're interested in planning and zoning or fire and police, they just fill it out, turn it in. Uh, we have openings periodically, and we have an opening now on the fire and police. That's why I'm promoting it. Okay, public comments. Yes, please. We will be patient. It won't cut into the, your three minutes. Yeah, it won't cut into your three minutes, as Sean uh, helped me. Sandy Hayes, 6634 Cochise Drive. I have a question. I've noticed on the curb right outside of my driveway, there's a big red 50 marker. May I ask what that represents? Uh, I don't know. I'm looking at John. Uh, Public Works, uh, don't know. I just don't trust y'all, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Karen. Karen Barthel, 24 Sock Trail. On the agenda tonight is an ordinance requesting a variance for a generator to 111 Acacia Drive. Last year, Last week, after reviewing the partial engineering plan submitted 1323, there are four points that need to be addressed. The engineering plan, the documentation shows a diesel generator, not gas, and there's no specs as to size, placement, so forth and so on. 
There are no engineering drawings of the 18 inch recessed, con recessed concrete pad as per Mr. Mancioni's presentation at Planning and Zoning's public hearing. There are no engineered drawings of the berm as per Mr. Mancioni's presentation at public and zoning's public hearing, planning and zoning's public hearing. The ordinance cites the generator to be exercised a half an hour per month. <clears throat> at the planning and zoning public hearing, Mr. Cantiano's presentation cited a half an hour per week. The engineering plans, as I said, they on the plans that I saw, it said partial plan. The engineering plans are not complete or correct and need to be reviewed and resubmitted. This type of generator is the first to be installed in the village and will set a precedent for all the future installations. It is vitally important that it is done with proper engineering and planning. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Danielle? And again, for anybody new, there is another opportunity at the end of the meeting for public comments. Danielle Shveska, 11235 Hiawatha. I just wanted to say thank you to Public Works. Um, I called them on behalf of a neighbor today, and they were incredibly quick to respond and um, very helpful. So I just wanted to say thank you, guys. Appreciate it. That's nice. Thank you. Arthur Rodriguez, 111 Acacia Drive, 703. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's very important that we, um, we review this generator situation in our buildings because they're, they're way beyond what code requires. It's, it's a public safety issue, and it's very important that we upgrade these buildings the majority of these buildings are electrical. Four of the buildings are all electrical. The other one has gas as well. Um, in the event of, of uh, power outage or something, we need some type of life safety sy system throughout the building. My mother's 94 years old. She lives with me and my wife, and we live on the seventh floor. In the event that there was power outage or something, we'd have trouble carrying her down. I don't expect the fire department to do this because I don't think it's in their in their duties. But anyhow, um, this was already passed, but due to the pandemic, it was it was put on ice. Okay, we lost we lost the window of opportunity to do this, and. Um, we were told by the board that we had to reapply for the permit. I don't see why the board just don't review the old permit that was passed and, and we go on with this so we can get this done and we can use it as a flagship for the other buildings to uh, provide life safety systems throughout. It's very important to all the villagers and, and all the people that live in these, in these high rises here. From what I understand, there's no electrical codes in place for, for this village. However, um, so that means they would fall under the code of Cook County, which falls in with the Chicago Electrical Code as well. I know for a fact that as of 1989, the electrical codes had stated that in buildings of such, there would be life support systems, life safety systems throughout in the event that they lose power, meaning that they would have a generator system or battery backup. We've looked into battery backups. If you put a battery backup in there, you would just have way too many batteries. It's just, and they, they don't last long. They'll last about four and a half hours. And they probably won't run the elevators either. So I think it's very important that we look at this and we get it going as soon as possible. And uh, we move on. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, I don't see any others. Okay, moving along on the agenda. Um, the consent agenda, would somebody like to make a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as established. I'll second. Thank you, Sean and Rita. 
Treasurer, Maureen, are you ready to uh, do the financial summary? At the end of December, cash on hand was 2.3 million. Warrants for the month were 405,000. There was nothing out of the ordinary. Revenue was 1.1 million, leaving an ending cash balance of 3.1 million. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the trustees? John, anything to add? No, sir. Could we have a roll call vote, please, Clerk Allison? <laughs> yes, um, Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee Bitts. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. And Trustee Donnersberger. Aye. Thank you. That has been approved. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're on to new business. Would somebody like to make a, a motion for the um, 111 Acacia Drive emergency generator? Um, I'll make a motion to pass based, pass ordinance number 2023-02, an ordinance allowing for the variation for a generator at 111 Acacia Drive. A second. Thank you, Sean. I think that was you, Rita and Sean. Uh, I'd like to Andy? make a motion to amend motion. Uh, the existing motion uh, does provide for uh, uh, testing for 30 minutes once a month, uh, but it uh, is silent on the uh, recessed base of 18 inches. I would uh, move that, that that be part of the ordinance uh, as a requirement. We need a second. A, thank you, Eileen. <clears throat> Uh, any questions or comments about the amendment? Andy, any discussion on that or? Uh, about the amendment specifically? Yeah. Or, no, I think it's appropriate. So the way the ordinance is written is it's um, approval based upon the plans uh, submitted to planning and zoning in the village, well, submitted to the village and that planning and zoning reviewed, um, which does include the 18 uh, inches, but I think it's, definitely appropriate to explicitly include it in the ordinance as well. So I think it's a good idea. Okay, do you, um, do you want to make comments on the... Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to vote on the... Any other comments or questions about that? Yeah, I have another motion, but let's vote on this one first. Okay. If we pass. Yeah, I, I want to say that I'm, I support the... Uh, um, placement of this. Um, it's behind a, uh, it's next to the building that's going to be screened, it's going to be recessed, um, and also there's going to be a parking area, um, and there could be a car that blocks it from the, the townhomes. Um, so I don't see that it's going to be any kind of, a, any, any kind of an intrusion um, other than half hour of a, a, um, a month. The people next to the building probably will hear it but that's not very much. And I think it's, uh, it's definitely needed. I'm surprised that it's, it, it hasn't been there before. Any other comments? Okay, uh, Clerk Allison, could we have a vote on the amendment, please? Yes. So, uh, Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee Dottersberger. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Metz? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. All right, the amendment has passed. It was also mentioned in the presentation that there was a berm to be uh, placed as part of the installation and that I believe the uh, berm should be included in part of the uh, ordinance as well. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. There, there was a berm that was mentioned in the presentation and that uh, that should be part of the ordinance uh, that that berm is uh, installed as part of the ordinance. So you and, making and I, a motion, I, I, move, I move that the ordinance be amended to include that. I'll second it. <clears throat> and are there specifics on the berms? I'm sorry, I don't know, but a height, width. I don't material. have that, Andy. Do you, do you have that specific information? No, I don't. I don't. Did, was there a set number thought of? I know you were planning to do a berm. Did you have a height in mind? It's going to be in correlation. 
short answer is no, we don't have a height. Yeah. Because that's, we needed to get to this point so that we can go ahead and clarify our engineering as well as height design, the impact on the side, how tall the landscaping is going to be, what's the landscaping requirements from the PNZ. Because my understanding is you're going to, you're going to base the berm on the requirement that it covers 75%. So, <coughs> including the landscaping, so uh, I think uh, I don't know if it's necessary because it's got to be covered seventy-five percent either way. Landscaping, whether the landscaping's on a foot of berm or half a foot, um, but I mean, what, landscaping and the berm are part of the three dimensions. Yeah, so yeah, all combined to, combined, to cover it. That's yeah. mentioned in number seven on on the third page. The, there. Let me see. For page sixty-seven. On that. So, Andy, when you say 75% yes. coverage, so, and Jack, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Jack Mazzioni. I'm the owner and CEO of uh, MI Construction. We are the project manager for one, the 111 building. So, if I have numbers correct in my head, and Jack, please tell me if I don't, the, the equipment right now is 45 inches tall? Correct. And you're going to bury it 18 inches, which would leave 27 exposed, not including the berm. So the 27 exposed would be from ground level. Correct. So if we add exposed would be from the top of the slab. So we top of the slab. Correct. Okay. So if we again berm six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, I'm wondering if it really matters. If we're saying 75% minimum has to be covered because you're going to put landscaping on top of the berm anyway. Correct. And It'll be a three-dimensional berm. There'll be three tiers of landscaping that go up with the berm. So the total height of the berm at the dirt level, approximately 18 to 24 inches. Above the ground level? Above the ground level. Correct. Fine, I'll go with that. Okay. Yeah, 18 to 24 inches above the ground, to be specific then. Okay. So it'll sister up to the berm next to it. That was our goal. <laughs> so there's actually an existing berm at the 111 building where the Austrian pines are. As that berm, we'd continue that down uh, according to drainage and according to uh, we'll maintain that 18 to 24 inches. Andy, does that give you enough definition? Yeah, to I think that's a it? good. I think that's totally fine to add the 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 18 inch 18 inch berm, and then we already we already have the requirement that it has to be covered 75 percent. So. Okay, so 18 inch. So the so the motion is to be specific, an 18 inch berm. Okay, understood. Eileen, you okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee Donnersberger. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Metz. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Can I ask a question? This is for the amendment, not for the right. variance. Right. Aye. And for uh, and uh, Trustee Farrell Mayor, aye, All right. <coughs> that has been approved. Okay. Any others, Charlie? Yeah, I have a question of uh, staff uh, included in the ordinance that uh, indicates that this presentation is uh, based on a, a presentation given on January third, and it was indicated in the proposed ordinance that uh, there were prior to the public he hearings that there was a regular mailing for residents uh, or owners uh, within 250 feet of the subject property. Uh, there are a number of people that I've talked to that have not gotten that uh, mailing at all. People in the 111 building as well as people in Indian Ridge. And uh, do we have a potential issue here? I would ask uh, Rick to uh, uh, perhaps uh, our, our uh, corporate counsel here to uh, uh, Share some thoughts on that. Before we ask that, did we send out the we, letter? We did send that. I, I heard the same thing. I, and we've heard that with other mailings, not just this. It's unfortunately, I think, a reality with the post office these days. And we have a list of who we of mailed it to? all the addresses, to. yeah. And, Trustee, as long as we've gone through and we can document the fact that we did send the information and we have the, the list of the people within the protected and notification range, we will be okay. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments from the board? No, with all the controversy this has created, I would imagine there isn't anybody that doesn't know about it who's affected it. <laughs> I realize we have to follow the rules of the law, but I'm sure everybody knows about it. Okay, 
Anything else? Andy, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, would you like me to provide the background on it, on the whole thing, or is that I don't think so. Aware? I think we're, we've heard it. Okay. So I think we're good, right? I'm looking around. I, my only pushback would be that I um, took part in a couple of meetings since our last board meeting about this, and I was given some information that I was not aware of, or maybe a better way to put it is I had some preconceived notions going into it that I'm wondering if it, it isn't worth a few minutes of Jack's time to run down some particulars, i.e., it's not a diesel Cummings generator, it's a natural gas generator, and specifics like that. Um, the gentleman, I think he just left, that was speaking about how the permit was originally issued and approved, and it wasn't, um, the project wasn't completed due to COVID. They couldn't get the equipment. They went for another permit. Uh, residents are wondering why it wasn't just fast tracked, passed through, because nothing had changed from permit to permit. So, Andy, uh, can you give us a brief overview? Yes, so it is a natural gas generator. It, it must be according to our code. Um, Karen, I know it, you probably saw the they when they originally submitted, um, they gave us the diesel version. We just told them you had to give us natural gas version. And so that C, the model C100N6, that's natural gas six, that's the model that we're um, looking at today. Um, what was the other question about the electrical code that he? Oh, the national electric code. Yeah, we we have an electrical code. We have adopted our own. I think what the gentleman might have been referring to is that, in our code of ordinances, we have a one size fits all rule on residential generators. And since the condo building is zoned residential, it's applied to them as well. The problem is that the um, when the code was written, it it really has a single family home in mind, not a five, seven story, seven story condo building. Uh, and so that's something we need to look at changing our, t our overall code about having, you know, business or commercial, uh, single family, et cetera, f as far as generators go. But that, I think that might've been what he was referring to. And that is one of the uh, 12 village goals, right? A, um Review of the zoning code and land use plan, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, is that good for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One last question. Th this is this is the contemplated. Uh, on, and if they were to change this model, would they would they need to come back and? Uh, yes, it must be uh, a C one hundred and six. Okay. Very good. I'm good. Thank you, Clerk Allison. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Trustee Farrell, Mayor. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Metz? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. Uh, Trustee Eck? Aye. And Trustee Donnersberger? Aye. This has passed. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I want anybody to leave, but if you did want to leave, this would be a good time. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to move on to the uh, item B. Would somebody like to make a motion about the commercial signage? Yes, hold on here. <clears throat> I make a motion to pass Ordinance 2023-04, an ordinance regulating commercial signs in the village. I'll second it. Thank you, Rita and Brenda. Andy, is this you? This is, thank you. So um, <laughs> this is a second reading for this ordinance. Me. I'll let everyone clear out. But um, You're off. second reading for this ordinance, uh, last time the board asked if we could get a bit more information, some more pictures on businesses in town, and that's what we did. And so uh, just to reiterate what we're looking to do here, we're looking to modify uh, regulations as far as the size of commercial signs, as well as the illumination. And we're looking to close essentially a loophole in the sizing uh, rules, and we're looking to add uh, restrictions on the amount of lumens that can be included. And also, as written, the ordinance would also uh, prohibit illuminated signs from hanging or being placed in any inside window. It would prohibit flashing, blinking, or intermittent lights, uh, as well as neon lights. And 
I'll start with the, I'll start with this. So we we I sent co enforcement out to take a look and to measure the lumens from the lights. And the the ordinance as written says um, it must be 350 lumens or less. The good news is the vast majority of businesses seem to be compliant with that. Uh, you'll have um, if you for the board your commercial signage packet. The first memo has a little table on it. It's a sampler of some of our businesses, the amount of lumens that they project at four feet from their sign, uh, as well as whether they are compliant. In the case of the six that we tested, uh, only one uh, was not compliant. It's not a surprising one. It's the tobacco shop, but all the others were. So that's, that's a good indicator. I think that we've got a good number, 350 lumens. And, and then here on the up on the TVs and then also at the end of your packets. I just have included a lot of different pictures of our businesses, what their main signs look like, as well as the signs that they have in their windows. And so this is on uh, the agenda as a second reading. The idea is to take more feedback, get more direction, and then come back next month for a final reading. And there's really two questions that I think uh, staff has for the board as far as direction. And the first one is, if we were to implement these uh, regulations today, a lot of the signs uh, in town would become uh, existing non-conforming structures. Legally, we can't mandate their immediate removal. However, why not? It's it would count as a taking. Uh, I'm I'm sure uh, Rick could go to it a bit, in a bit more. We, we, we can't uh, ask uh, all signs to conform to the uh, regulations? Not immediately. You can ask, but you would be required to compensate them if they were required to immediately conform. <laughs> so that, that but, becomes the issue. It becomes a take. But what we can do is we can uh, provide an amortization schedule. And uh, so basically so that over a certain amount of time, they would have to come into compliance. And so that's what I'm asking the board is, and I think the answer is probably yes, does, do we want to include that in this ordinance? And, and if so, uh, staff will work with uh, our legal counsel on setting that amortization schedule up. So that was the first question, and I think, I, think, uh, I mean, I'll, I won't speak for the board, but we recommend including that kind of schedule. The second question- How much time would there be in that amortization? Like a year, what, what are we talking about? Could you go into it? Do you know, Rick, how how uh, how short of a span can you set? You would have to actually take a look at the the duration for which the signs are up there, and yeah, it, it may vary on a case to case, case by case basis. And without having done the analysis, I can't give you a good answer on that. Okay. So, Rick, if I'm following, so if we have a sign that's been up for 20 years, and they can document it's been 20 years, and you have one that's been up for 20 months, they're going to be completely different. They may be in terms okay. of looking at the longevity and the tenure and particularly, I mean, all those factors. Okay. What kind of signs, the mechanics in it. So there, mm -hmm. there's more factors there than we, yeah. Andy, if you're okay, try to get a consensus of the board on the first question. I think you were done with that. Yes, yes. Uh, it, is the board okay with adding the amortization for the sign? I see heads nodding. Yes. You guys okay with that? Yes. Okay, so that we have a majority for that. I will work with the uh, legal counsel then on figuring that out for next meeting. And then the second question is um, regarding the hanging signs, neon lights, flashing lights. Uh, the current draft of the ordinance prohibits hanging signs, and this this is something that would affect almost almost all of the businesses currently have hanging signs. Um, David, can you bring up the business pictures again? We'll go through it. And I'll point out what I mean. And, and they're in your packet, too. And that's often the one in the window, is Yeah, it, that, right? and that's what I mean, the stuff in the window, like open or, yeah, there you go, open. Um, lottery signs. Lottery signs. Video poker. Video gaming here. Uh, yeah. Why that one's up, do you know, do they have a dial on that tobacco sign? I do not know. I do not know. And I mean a dial so they could To change it, it yeah. I'll ask, yeah. That's a good word. Uh, 
but yeah, open or uh, lotto tickets, things like that. And so, and there's a lot of businesses that do have those hanging signs. So I guess that's another question is, is that something we want to eventually have them remove as well? Is it something the board views as tacky? Is it something the board views as fine? Would that be off of their hours of operation? Because often those are hanging by the door. Uh, in this case, it would be, so it would have to be, uh, let me read the exact language to you. No, if you have your hours operation, it is fine, but it's flashing, blinking, or intermittent signs. So, or the neon, or even I think neon open would count. So, so your question is, should the board look to add those in the, the, for the third well, reading? Well, uh, it's in the ordinance right now. So my question is, do we, do we want it to be in the ordinance? Do we want to okay. prohibit businesses from having open sign, do, having a gaming sign, things like that? Any thoughts for Andy to give uh, staff well, feedback? Yeah, well, one I, of the I, things that I I think it's important is the open sign. I mean, I wouldn't want to yeah. eliminate that. I agree. I agree. Some of the other signs, not so much. But is there one like video poker? Is that a common one, or what's? Uh, I don't think we have a lot to say light beer or Miller beer or anything. Yeah, no. Most of them are probably are gaming here. Uh, yeah, you can probably you might be able to see better in your packets on Wolf's Head. Uh, they have uh, down in the center, underneath their main sign, I believe it says gaming here or something like that. Video video gaming is what it says. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, on something like this, we may want to take, if if it is the board's direction to see if we can reduce the number of hanging signs. Um, or eliminate many of them, we may want to look at number and size as opposed to what the content is. Some of the more recent Supreme Court rulings have made it very difficult that if you have to look at the sign to know whether the regulation applies to it based on reading it, it may be a problem. So okay. as opposed to saying no, you can have an open sign but not another sign, potentially saying you can have one sign limited to a certain and then letting the proprietor decide how they want to handle that. Is that something the board would like to look at for the next reading next month? I see one, two. That'd be great. We'll come up with something then. Well, I only see no. I see two yeses, one no, and again, we're not voting on it, but giving staff direction. I see another one. I got a question and a comment. It feels to me like this has all been spurred on simply because of the tobacco shop, and if the tobacco shop didn't come into the village we wouldn't even be discussing this. So that, that was honestly the impetus, but I do think it is a good idea to have the illumination standards either way. I think it's best practice. I'm not disagreeing with that. From illumination standards, you're saying the brightness of a sign, yes. right? Yeah. Um, the other thing is, well, if we talk about gaming, if that winds up being a no, how much tax revenue is gaming added to this town and all of a sudden we're going to put an ordinance in to tell people that are putting gaming in that they can't have gaming signs? It seems a little disingenuous and a, a problem that we can't take their money but tell them that they can't illuminate a sign in their business. John, what is gaming revenue? Over 100, right? 144,000 a year. And even if it's 10,000, whatever it is. I mean, again, if we're taking their revenue, if we're taking their tax money, all of a sudden we're going to tell them that they can't have a sign. So I, I just... I, well, I, I don't think we said you can have it. Well, I think but you, if we're uh, going down the path of it's a hanging sign and, you know, open we can have, but everything else we can't, it's... Well, I, maybe the uh, it's two hanging signs or three, right, a uh, certain size. Well, but how do, we, how do we quantify what they are? I mean, if, if Ari's got a lottery sign that's hanging and somebody has a gaming sign and, and Indian Head or um, Wolf's Head has a Bud Light sign, I mean, do we say no liquor, no tobacco, no... I, I, I just well, I feel like we're starting to go down a rabbit hole here that doesn't need to be gone down. Let me uh, the illumination, ask. the brightness. I get because there are residents, from my understanding, that are across the street from Joliet that were affected immediately by the brightness of the vape shop. So it, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I, and let me uh, ask Eileen if you can hear me. What are your thoughts? Would you like to see something about number of signs in the next reading? So I can hear maybe 80% of what's being said, um, but in terms of the illumination, uh, Sean, I think that um, 
as the Economic Development Committee is looking at signage up there, that certainly would have been looked at. So I don't think it's only because of one particular store that's up there. It's something that as we move forward with the signage, uh, we want everything to be uniform up there. Um, and the second part of it, I think, had to do with gaming signs, but I'm not quite sure uh, where the discussion went with that. Were you thinking of not allowing gaming uh, signs or what? I think it was number of hanging signs is, and maybe size um, of hanging signs. Hanging, not gaming? Yeah, hanging in the window or outside on the wall. I, you know, I think I need to get a little bit more information, see what other uh, villages are doing about that. Um, All right, how about I, I this? Do, um, I don't have enough information. All right, thank you. Uh, how about, I, I think we had three that were forward. Again, we're not voting, but we're giving staff direction. Sean, if you're okay, I think if you move forward with that, again, we can have the discussion next month. Yeah. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. I guess that's a yes, I don't know. Yes. yes. No, I got you two, Charlie went both ways. <laughs> Okay, Andy, did you get what you need? Yeah, I, I, I did. And um, what I'll do next month is I'll provide options. I'll provide a couple of options for the board to choose between. Um, so. And to Eileen's point, maybe what neighboring towns are doing and all yes. that. Yes, and this, or I can't remember off the top of my head, but the ordinance is drafted based upon um, one of our neighboring towns. I can't remember right now, though. So, But, yeah, I'll look at that info, too. All right, thank you. Uh, next item C, a letter supporting the village of Willow Springs. I'll make a motion to authorize the mayor to sign on behalf of the village a letter regarding our support for the village of Willow Springs. I'll second that. Thank you, Brenda and Charlie. John, is this you? Yes, sir. So there's a draft letter um, that we have received from other communities that have signed. The mayor received a phone call from the mayor of Willow Springs asking for support of the letter. In general, I think most of you know that there's a kerfuffle between Lyons Township High School wishing to sell land for uh, industrial purposes. That's located in the village of Willow Springs, which is zoned residential. Um, we, this letter basically says we support a municipality's right for self-determination and zoning that another taxing body does not have the authority to zone property in that village so basically <clears throat> excuse me I as village administrator would not like another community telling the village how to zone our property uh, we're supporting Willow Springs in their decision-making capability they have indicated a desire not to change zoning from residential and we're encouraging that so. And I think, uh, Chris, I'm sorry, one more comment. I believe the letter as presented is either um, you guys sign this or you don't, but I don't think we have the option to edit. If somebody right. took issue with one sentence or wanted to change a word or a paragraph, whatever. I'm yeah. sorry, Chris, I interrupted. Well, John, you, uh, you said you wouldn't want one taxing body to tell another what to do. I don't believe that LT is telling anybody what to do. Do you have some facts that show that they are? My, my facts know my understanding of conversation with my fellow village managers and uh, what I've read in the paper that seems to be consistent with what they say is uh, Willow Springs was somewhat, the village of Willow Springs was somewhat blindsided by this and that is the extent of my knowledge. Okay, the, the property is zoned residential. Correct. Because there was talk 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I don't remember how many, about selling it. And I believe at that time, Willow Springs zoned that property, residential. Uh, um, and I could, I could have some of my facts wrong here. Um, but that's my basic understanding. If, uh, if somebody were to come to our village, if we had a big piece of property, uh, um, and somebody else owned it and wanted to sell it, the seller doesn't necessarily determine what's going to happen to it. Absolutely. Uh, the, the buyer is going to determine what they're going to do with it, and the buyer, if they do their due diligence, I would imagine they would go to the, the village first and say, what can we do here, before they even put a contract in. And I had, that's what I had happen with property that my family sold. 
Um, the, that is the, typically what happens, and for this to go as it did is kind of a head scratcher for me. Okay, so, um, but but so then the, so then they need to apply for if they have a contract on the property, they need to apply for a zoning variance if they want to do something other zoning than what it's zoned correct from what it's zoned for correct right. That's their due diligence. We're talking about a fifty-five million dollar uh, bid price. I can't believe they didn't do their due diligence and go to the village of Willow Springs and say, can we do this? At, for us to get involved in this without having all the facts, I don't know the facts from the, from the LT, and I don't think we should sign this. It's not that I want to see a commercial or industrial development in Willow Springs. I don't. Perhaps I can um, give you a little background on that. I was not at the last letter, LT. Can I get our If the letter is uh, in support of the village's um, ability to create zoning in the way they think is appropriate for their village. How is that stepping into it? What, we're just supporting what we would want to be supported in doing. It's it's already zoned the way that it sounds like people want no, it to, I get it. to go. Yeah, and uh, and we don't have anything to do with what, what Willow Springs um, does with the property within their village. Uh, um, so I don't, and, and again, we don't know what LT is, uh, what, 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 the, what all the facts are in all this. And so I think it's, uh, I'm not in favor of us um, signing this letter. I don't see the purpose of it. And, yeah, I, and really, I'll, I want to know where the village of Willow Springs is on this, and did somebody come to them yeah, first? I was, I was uh, not at the last LT board meeting, but the one before that, and the entire board from the village of uh, Willow Springs was there. The village manager got up and spoke to the LT uh, high school board and said uh, it's zoned residential. We're not looking to make a change residential. Uh, if you want to talk to our board and mayor, they're all sitting right over here. Uh, he also went on to say, and this is, this is perhaps some of the reason why uh, it's, it's kicking up some of the dust, is, is that he said, we tried on, on uh, more than uh, one occasion to uh, set up a meeting with LT to chat with them in regards to this particular issue. You've ignored our calls. Uh, then someone from the board of the, I believe it's the park district, uh, got up and essentially said the same thing. We, uh, there, uh, the park district has seven acres in the center of the 70 acres. And uh, he said the same thing as we tried on more than one occasion to set up a meeting with LT to talk about uh, this situation. We've been ignored. And there were also people there. There's a uh, parochial school that's uh, entered off of German Church Road that's adjacent to this property. And there were homeowners uh, who, whose kids go to that school that have uh, kind of indicated the same thing, Chris. So the, the uh, part of the dust that was kicked up appears to be the uh, uh, lack of, of communication on the part of the LT board to uh, uh, chat with their neighbors, which uh, is you, the village, in this case, is the village of uh, Willow Springs. Yeah, do you know if the prospective buyer went to Willow Springs ahead of time? Do you know either way? Uh, no, the uh, the attorney for the um, uh, the school district did get up and say you can sell to whoever you want uh, for whatever purposes, which is consistent with what you're saying. But if the uh, village uh, and the zoning is not in conformance with the way they want to use it, then uh, they're uh, they either need to return the property. They've got 90 days. Excuse me. I think they've got nine months to. Uh, get zoning uh, changed, uh, and if not, then, then the buyers can cancel the contract uh, with it. I haven't read the contract, but that was what was represented at that particular meeting. Yeah, some, and, something and just and isn't adding up right here for me, and um, we need more facts, uh, and I'm not, not in support of this letter at all. So, um, that's a talking, that's Chris, Chris. Um, you know, it, it seems like it's common sense that a uh, reputable business would be checking the zoning before they bought it. But let me tell you, I was involved in a multi-million dollar sale of a building on Michigan Avenue, the Chicago Athletic Association. And the buyers that came in and paid way more than they should have did not do their due diligence um, and didn't understand that they couldn't build up because the cityscape is protected along Michigan Avenue. When they start drilling into um, 
the pool, if you're familiar with the building, there's a beautiful pool. They start build, uh, digging into the pool so they could go up. And when the inspectors came in, they stopped the whole project. And uh, those investors ended up going bankrupt. So everybody's not as smart as we think they should be. Yeah, but that's not our. That's not for us to determine. This is not our. It's not our town. It's up to the village of Willow Springs to determine what happens to that property within their village. It seems to me that Willow Springs uh, wants to keep it the way it is, and all we're doing is supporting that. They don't need our support. They they have everything they they have everything they need with or without our support. That, uh, if I can ask a question to uh, council, um, do we have any liability by supporting this or not? Supporting this going forward, is there any liability in your opinion? No, this this is purely moral support. Okay. Um, so I agree with Trustee Metz, um, and to piggyback on what Trustee Eck had said, um, yes, Pleasant Hill Park District has seven acres in the middle of this. Um, I know one of the board members there personally, I've spoken to him personally, they were not notified, there was no discussions. My understanding is that uh, same thing with um, Willow Springs. I did have a conversation with the village administrator a couple weeks ago. Um, it seems like a bad situation all the way around. I am wavering on the fact that does it matter what we say or not, signing this or not? Does it, does it really matter in the grand scheme of things? And, and part of me wants to say not to get involved at all and just let them do their thing. Um, I agree with, with Trustee Metz. If I'm writing a $55 million check, I'm crossing all my I's and dotting all my T's to make sure it's going to go through. And I don't understand if that did not happen, why they did not do that. But that is not our issue or our problem. I feel as though Willow Springs is dug in, and I support them from that standpoint. But... Again, I don't know why it's necessary for us to get involved at this point. Um, I'm not disagreeing with it. I'm just questioning the fact of let that village deal with the situation as they see fit. Uh, Have other te- technically, villages uh, written the letter, submitted it? Uh, Burr Ridge is the other uh, municipality that's on the letter. The Park District of Pleasantdale and Willow Springs and Park Pleasantdale School District are the four uh, signees of the letter that I was sent last week. And all of them are affected by this one way or another, potentially. As, as we might as well. But let me, let me go on to say is, is part, part of this, I believe, is to catch the attention of the LT school board that uh, they shouldn't ignore uh, communication with uh, the communities that they're in. And um, to that extent, I support uh, this letter. John. One thing that we also should consider is we play in the same sandbox with our neighboring communities. And when Willow Springs asks for our help, when something is seemingly in my mind, and I do not wish to minimize the importance of proper zoning, is Willow Springs, we, when they ask for our assistance, I think something about of this nature is we should say yes, that we support you on this because we do have relations with these communities and our staffs especially. So, is the um, offer rescinded at this point? Is there is technically no offer on the table because they didn't meet some criteria? The board actually at the meeting I was at they actually rejected the contract. Uh, but I think it was for technical purposes, and I don't know what's happened since then. It could have been reinstated at that point. But at that meeting, the board voted to uh, uh, rescind the contract for technical purposes. But, I, but they've been negotiating with this particular buyer for several months. I suspect that this is not over yet. Uh, Do you re- recall what the stipulations were on the technical? Like, did they have 30 days to comply, come back, change something? The, the technical items weren't discussed at the meeting, Sean. <clears throat> How do you know they were negotiating with the buyer for several months? Pardon me? How do you know they were negotiating with the buyer for several months? Uh, that's come out in, in publications and in, uh, in the communications. Patch? Pardon me? In the patch? Or what do you mean publications? News, news stories or any of this? I'd like to know from the 
school board what the story is. Oh, why don't you call and ask for an appointment? Uh, well, maybe we can. Yeah, the, 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 the president of uh, the school board lives in our village. She, she, yeah, she, was, she, she conducted the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, do we have other questions, comments? I guess I would just have one final question. John, I, 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 the attorney made this, but you don't, you don't see a whole lot of downside to this? None at all. Okay. We all good? I see your heads. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to say I see a downside if there's more to this than we realize. Uh, um, and, I, and I do think yeah, the, there's got to be something. On the situation some, itself, I'm not going to disagree with, but there. I'm talking about the letter, the letter specifically. Yeah, oh, like I, the situation, I, I think, is clouded. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know and we may never find out, and who knows if the deal is actually going to go through. But pertaining to this letter itself, if council and administration is saying that there's no downside for the village, then that's different than the overall um, scope of the project. That, yes, I believe, I agree with you 100% that there's a lot of things that we don't know about. And it's unfortunate because I don't think that it should be um, not public record at this point on everything. Can we, can we postpone this, uh, table it until we can get maybe get some answers from at least Willow Springs? Uh, I'd really like to know if they ever had any contact with any prospective buyers for this property. I, I know Willow Springs wants to send the letter. Um, I told uh, Melissa, the mayor, that uh, we had a meeting this Thursday, and I believe she was going to wait and see what we did. I'm guessing they would not wait another month. But uh, I did not ask that question. Tr Trustee Metz, let me just reiterate, and I don't know if this helps you at all. Charlie said it. I said it, too. I, I personally had spoken to the village administrator and a trustee on the um, Pleasant Hill Park District. There's been no communication from their standpoint. Um, I have no reason to believe that they lied about that. Okay. Okay. How about we do a roll call vote, please, Clerk Allison? Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Eck? Yes. Uh, Trustee Donnersberger. Aye. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Trustee Metz. No. All right, thank you. Thank you. Can I vote? <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy? Yes. We, we got everybody right? I know. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, that has been approved. Okay, moving along to the next. Um, somebody would like to make a motion regarding the Wolf Road Ordinance. Yeah, sorry, I'm losing my spot. Where are we? Uh, I make a motion. Uh, D, right? I yes. make a motion to pass Ordinance 2023-5, an ordinance amending our, our Ordinance 2022-42 pertaining to the intergovernmental aid agreement with Cook County. I'll second that. Thank you, Sean and Charlie. John, can you give us a uh, overview, please? So we also have Matt Gaziak from Strand Associates here, um, village engineer who's kind of spearheading this for us. Um, in general, though, as recap, um, at a prior board meeting in last year, the board passed an ordinance amending the IGA, which was a little bit different than what the county had sent us with the intergovernmental agreement. We forwarded our ordinance to uh, Cook County and they responded back. Um, in it, we had a number of concerns, uh, some of them technical, uh, some of them policy related, and high level summary, and I'll let Matt talk about this a little bit more, on the policy issues, the county agreed with us absolutely. They're going to be adding um, consideration for the people involved in the in the CAC and the public improvement plan. Um, there are some things technical that are going to be deferred uh, that will be done, but not part of, as part of the phase one study. Uh, most of these have to do with engineering, uh, vault, vault drawings, um, things of that nature, underground. Um, utilities, um, stormwater management, the MWRD will become involved, but at a later date, as will the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, they're going to be adding some exhibits. They're going to be uh, removing some exhibits because they're combining them. So in general, I, in review of the amendments proposed by Cook County, I think that they are all reasonable, and they meet our goals. 
we wanted to put the county on notice that we wanted more public involvement, that we wanted special consideration in the design, and they are, they are accommodating it with us. So Matt, if you have anything to add. Let, let's see if we have questions before we get All to right. Matt. Questions or comments from the board? That well, was a very reasonable response on the part of the county. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, I don't hear any questions. Uh, if you're okay, John, without going to Matt, Matt, I'm sure you're okay not speaking. If we had any questions, we'd call on you, but uh, I don't hear any. So, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, sir. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Trustee Metz. Aye. A trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. And Trustee Donner Donnersberger? Aye. Thank you. That is passed. That's been approved. Thank you. The next item is E, an ordinance which uh, this is for discussion only. So, John, is this you? Uh, correct. So, we've had a, a number of, surprisingly, as of late, a number of truck issues with trucks that are either oversized or not appropriate uh, getting stuck in uh, residential streets um, or using uh, Cochise as a turnaround. And it's becoming somewhat problematic. If you know there's a house on um, Cochise at Wolf Road um, mm -hmm. that's been, the light pole in front of their house has been hit several <coughs> times by, by trucks. So one of the, the purpose of this ordinance is to prohibit uh, non- truck traffic that does not have a purpose being in the village. So if a moving truck is allowed, will be allowed, or a delivery truck will be allowed if it's coming in to the village for a very specific purpose. But using a village road as a shortcut is not allowed. We will have the ability to cite uh, the driver of that truck. Uh, there's um, increasing penalties for multiple offenses. Uh, so basically it's just we're restricting truck traffic on village streets. Um, we will post accordingly. We will let uh, trucking companies and probably Google knows so that they can restrict or update their systems. Um, but that's basically it. And it is a first reading, so no vote scheduled for tonight, but possibly at the next board meeting. So I just ask for your, your thoughts. Question, um, village streets, uh, internal streets, Correct. So this doesn't pertain to Plainfield, Wolf Road, Joliet Those are Road. not under our jurisdiction, so it does not. Okay. So if a truck is on uh, Apache Drive that is trying to turn around because it's lost as opposed to delivering a refrigerator, that's potentially an issue. Correct. Okay. Um, so internal streets, trucks that don't have any business being on that street. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question about um, construction traffic. Um, we've had a lot of it in our neighborhood mm -hmm. because of the work being done on Plainfield Road and 294 mm -hmm. and not only truck traffic but people parking all over the place mm -hmm. on the streets um, so I'm wondering is that going to apply to this uh, will this apply to that as well they will be given routes uh, as determined by the police department as where they can go okay. so they have to have access to the site that right. they're working on but and I pick on just a random truck company, ABF. Um, they want to take a shortcut. Uh, Wolf Road is backed up and they want to take a shortcut. They can't do that. Okay, but going down by Pontiac and Keokuk, the construction trucks are going that way and they're also damaging that light pole there as well. Correct, so we will uh, let the county know and the construction companies know and the tollway that they can only go on certain areas. They have to be able to get to the construction site, mm -hmm. but in general, I'm, I'm thinking about, and I don't want to reveal their name, but there's a house on Wolf Road uh, with a traffic, um, with a street light that has been hit a, a couple times mm -hmm. in the last few months. That's really what I'm targeting here. Rather than fines, can we impound the truck for a period of time? <laughs> um, the chief of police is that, saying that, no. That will, get, that will get their attention if we hold on to the truck for, uh, uh, um, 20, yeah, for 24 I, I, hours. I, I, the chief of police is saying no. Uh, $750 fine. Wow. Good. One other question. I mean, this is as far as the construction and that goes. They are constantly bringing in mud. So people are walking their dogs and what have you throughout the neighborhood. And 
to this day, there is still mud all over the streets. Can we not enforce them to bring a sweeper in? We've asked this before, and they never bring a sweeper in to clean the streets for the village. We will do that. Okay. Other questions or comments or feedback as this is the uh, first reading? And I think we were discussing earlier in regards to the signage that it only needs to be at the entrances. It doesn't have to be on each individual street. <coughs> My understanding is it would be at, on Acacia Drive. We have two entrances on Wolf Road. We would have one on, at each of the entrances. Correct. So not, we wouldn't have it on Stone Hearth, but entrances to the major subdivisions. Correct. Uh, how do we, what trucks, there's a lot of different trucks, how do we have a sign? Is there a, a certain class B, class C, so class something, the way, weight limit? Uh, yeah, the way the ordinance is written is um, 10,000 pounds or more. Okay, uh, how do we enforce that? And I'll, Chief Kernick, please chime in. How do we know if it's 9,000 or 12,000 pounds? We don't have a scale. What Chief Kernick said uh, for the recording is by the plate, the registered plate of the vehicle. Okay. Is that correct, sir? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, in other words, we can enforce this. Thank you. And if you think of any other comments, uh, you know, please get them to John or I. Uh, anything else on that? Mm -mm. Okay, moving along to item F for the resolution. Okay, I make a motion to pass resolution 01-2023, a resolution adding additional depositories for village funds. I'll second it. Thank you, Chris and Brenda. John? We need a resolution to allow us to use uh, certain banking services. Uh, right now, uh, we have uh, three financial institutions that we use. Uh, State Bank of Countryside, which is a one trust bank, uh, Illinois Funds, which is operated by the state of Illinois, and Heartland Bank, which is a pass through. Uh, we're looking to expand our ability to invest money um, to get better interest rates. Um, normally, it's just a tenth of a percent difference, but with interest rates rising, uh, this could be a few thousand dollars a year more to the village, and it allows us greater flexibility with where we place money. We looked at some area financial institutions. Um, got some quotes from them, and they are competitive with Wintrust, but we want to be able to have the bank sharpen their pencils a little bit. So we're adding three financial institutions to our list of uh, places where we can put money. And we will be looking at um, investing in different methodologies. T-bills are, are already allowed because they're guaranteed by the federal government. Uh, but we will be looking at CDs and, and other money market opportunities with the banks that we have. How did we choose these three? Uh, most of them are local, and I was referred to uh, Green State by, I, I've received a number of mailings from Green Street. Um, they are somewhat local. Um, Trustee Eck helped and, as a um, member of our finance committee. Uh, Jim Gazes also gave input, but these are all somewhat local banks also. I worry about time if we have a relationship with them of staff time getting to and from the bank if needed. That's why you'd want a local, is that right? Correct. Yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, that the existing ordinance allows for uh, T-bills. Okay. Correct. T-bills, uh, as I understand it now, have uh, uh, rates above 4% on yields uh, three months, six months, 12 months out the line. T-bills don't go any further than 12 months. Do we have any money in T-bills right now? No, we don't. Um, do we have any money in any investment paying more than a half a percent right uh, now? Yes, we do. Illinois Funds is 4.4%. Uh, How much do we have there, um, roughly? It's on your, your sheet. I, not, I don't recall that. Didn't get um, the sheet for that. And um, it's on the listing of where we have our money in earlier in the board meeting. And Wintrust is also paying more than 4% right now, too. And do we have money there now? Yeah, we have a bulk of our money with with the State Bank of Countryside. Yeah, but are they paying us, where the money we have, are they paying us interest on that? On some accounts, yes, because, and on other accounts, no, because that's our primary <coughs> checking account. So those accounts really do not make any money. Um, they're typically sweep accounts. 
So. Yeah, uh, we, we've got an opportunity here to increase uh, uh, income to the village in excess of 50,000 beyond the bu budget if we, uh, if we focus on what these investments will be. And this is in addition to the 40,000 that's in the budget uh, today. Uh, so in asking how much we've got invested at uh, different prices and different rates, I think is a, an important uh, uh, question to uh, get focused on and particularly as it relates to how much do we really have to keep in the bank at a zero interest rate in order to support our uh, other banking operations. Uh, you'd indicated at, I think, the, at the uh, budget meeting, I think it was the budget meeting, somewhere between a million and a million and a half uh, of uh, zero investment uh, uh, at that. And uh, that's certainly something that I think that uh, we can challenge and figure out how much uh, we would have to pay if that was a cash item as well. But uh, if, we, if we don't have a million and a half to two million invested at an interest rate now, we're missing opportunities uh, at the tune of 5,000 a month. We are in our finance manager, um, Helia Garbaz, is well aware of that, and she is working with Wintrust right now on cash flows. Okay, I don't, I don't have an answer from you that gives any meaning to what those numbers are, John, and I, I want to go a record that uh, that I am looking to see uh, what we really have invested at what interest rates and for what period of time. Does, that, of, does that affect adding these, this ordinance that's in front of us right now, though, that information? And I'm sure we have it, just not at yeah. your fingertips, Correct. right? Mm. right? But it doesn't affect the ordinance, does it, Charlie, that we're trying to No, I'm in favor of the ordinance. You're in favor of it. Yes, okay, sir. That's what I thought. Um, do we have an investment policy statement? We do. Okay. Um, I have an issue with anybody on the board recommending any financial institution. Um, I, 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 I think that having a third party uh, involved with choosing who we work with or, or, or trying to um, eradicate any possibility of somebody having a college buddy that's a bank manager or something with handling our money. Um, as a financial planner on the board for four years, I've never once suggested that we should open an account with my firm for that exact reason. Uh, I've never given strong financial advice on what we should be doing with our money, albeit I am in favor with trying to get a little more or interest, but I have a problem with how these were chosen and who they are. I'd like to have a little bit more um, openness as to um, choosing institutions than just taking the word of somebody. I, I do have an issue with that. Personally. I think, John, when you went through it, you said Green State Credit Union was somebody that you had gotten mailings from? I have gotten multiple mailings from them, so they were on my radar to begin with. Do we know other municipalities that might be using them? No, I don't, but we're, the amount that we're looking at, if we have money with a bank above $250,000, a financial institution, it has to be collateralized. Yeah. So... It will take an, a, a hit on interest on that also because it's a guarantee. Um, and I forget where I was going. Well, from a standpoint, of, you're, you're saying that that institution is... is Correct. The, our, our investment policy is very specific in that we look at security, liquidity, and yield. Does the investment policy, or do we have anything that, that uh, or, or, you know, even Helia um, looking at... Uh, choosing of the financial institutions. What is there any verbiage on that, on how that's done? The board has to authorize the financial institution, so the staff. Which is what we're talking about now. Correct. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I'm not at all suggesting that there's any impropriety, but I, I, I do have an issue with anybody that has a voting right to say where we might invest a million to three million dollars. I think that that's something that we should not dip our toes in personally. And that is usually just a staff issue where we place the money. We will call, get quotes, and, and go with the firm in the best interest of the village. But we're, we're only dealing with these firms and anybody else that we currently have a relationship with. Correct. Though. So that's, it's not the investment itself that I'm questioning. It's the firm and how it was chosen. Well, this this is a, this is just listing a couple of firms. Uh, I think that this list can be expanded with a little more time, Sean. And if you've got recommendations and with your experience as a financial planner, that would certainly be something to uh, 
uh, to listen to as well. Yeah, I mean that uh, list we've is, got, is we've almost. Got, we've got T bills that are already on there that we need to take advantage of that we haven't been. And uh, I don't disagree with that. Okay, so I, I just I, I would like a little bit more clarity and transparency as to the firms that we're choosing to again eventually potentially be putting large sums of money into. Who do you think should yeah. choose? I'm not sure. I, well, I that's I don't know if it's possible to have a third party. You know, if there's or an organization out there that does this for municipalities, because I can't believe that I'm the only person that's set on a board that is worried about something like this. And I don't know the answer to that. I am not aware of any okay. group that does that for municipalities. I think we start with this and then we, we add to it or subtract it as time goes along. It, 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 this, this gives us opportunities that we haven't had in the past. <laughs> To be able to invest some funds. Do we not have the that? opportunity because Countryside doesn't have this in their branch to allow T bills and other purchases like this? And my answer would probably be no, because it's a small bank. Well, Countryside's part of Wintrust, so Wintrust is a okay. much larger organization. Okay. And I bank with Wintrust, but I don't bank with any of the others. Well, I'll take that back. Uh, Ash, Ash, uh, Ashbrook Townhome did invest in a CD at, uh, at Green State at 4.5%. Yeah, I, again, I, one, I don't at all believe. I, 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 I don't care who we do. We need to, exp we need to expand what our opportunities Well, but if it's one trust, do they not are? have yeah. the, uh, the capability? Correct. It sounds like Correct. potentially they could. And if they don't, then yes, I am for expanding. I am for getting, because at a 4%, I've been talking to clients recently that 4.6% I've got right now, and we're yep. moving cash to just not sit in cash anymore because it doesn't make sense. That's I right. agree. I am not going to disagree with that. I just have a issue with how we got to these three, and is there a way to eradicate any potential seeming of impropriety of collusion or anything well that's, that's what's before us now so why don't we vote on it and if you know it passes fine if not it doesn't i think we're getting pretty far afield from what's before us right now i, I think what john said was maybe uh, i don't know if misleading is accurate but john and helia picked these three institutions so there was oh. nobody else picking them is that correct john correct. I mean, they were mentioned, but we, I was very much aware of PMA and PNC to begin with. Uh, PMA uh, is an advisor for another investment pool, um, IMET, it's called. So I am very much aware of the, the number one and number three. And Green Street, I received a lot of mail okay. from. Then I apologize that I didn't think that's what you said earlier. I, Sorry. Then I misspoke. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Uh, can we have a roll call vote, please, Clerk Allison? Trustee Metz. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. And Trustee Donnersberger. Aye. Thank you. That has been approved. Thank you all. Uh, moving along, um, again, we pulled the ordinance for the uh, pump station amendment, but John, I believe you have a short update. So that we have some issues going on with the pump station that I'm sure that you are aware of. Um, we have some issues with um, acquisition of equipment and we are looking at some alternatives. Um, the alternatives are, are acceptable to uh, the Public Works Department, uh, Justin and Don, and we are looking to renegotiate a, a lesser uh, cost contract with um, Independent Mechanical and with that we would be extending the time frame for completion until June of next year. Um, yeah. It actually is fortuitous to the village to do this because we could be doing construction during a lesser peak period of, of pumping in the village. So it's a good thing for everybody. It also gives us a chance to um, extend payments out a little bit um, for the pump station so it will help with our cash flow. And additionally, they will be picking up the additional engineering costs and we'll be paying the village a minimum fee of $25,000 uh, reduction in the price of the contract because of the consideration for this. So we will be coming to the board 
uh, for a series of formal change orders in the very near future, uh, possibly a special board meeting, but that is the direction we are headed at. Um, this is a critical piece of our infrastructure. We wanna make sure that we do it completely accurately and safely, and at the meantime, protect the interests of the village. So just letting you know that this is coming down uh, very soon. Thank you, John. Okay, uh, item H, Spring Fling Funding. Eileen. That would be me. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I think the board should all have in front of them a proposed budget that we will at some point be coming to you for. Do you want to make uh, a motion, Eileen? Sorry? Would you like to make a motion? To authorize the funding for the spring fling in an amount not to exceed $15,000 based on the budget to be distributed. Is that the motion you want to make? That sounds good to me. Thank you. I'll Is there second. a second? Thank you, Sean. Is that really a motion? Does that work? Sorry about that, Eileen, but we wanted to get that. Go ahead now, please. It, it wasn't in the form of a motion on the agenda, so I was unsure. Um, but at any rate, <clears throat> let me explain. Uh, the Economic Development um, Committee is trying to develop a fun activity for the entire family that will also assist the businesses up at, um, up at the Triangle to get the word out in terms of what, they do, what they're doing, what they sell, what they have to offer. Um, and, I mean, really what it comes down to is all the villages around us have sort of a defined downtown and they have activities. Even as we were sitting here, I was scrolling through the computer, and Western Springs has, no, I'm sorry, LaGrange has about three or four activities coming up. Uh, and I think that's what keeps the committee, uh, community vital. And boy, that was a big clap, clap of thunder. Um, vital and um, families interested in, in living there and commuting there and um, moving there. So. At any rate, we'd like to have a, what we're calling a spring fling. Uh, it will include vendors um, from all over the uh, area. Uh, we'll have music, we'll have face painting, we'll have um, cotton candy. It'll be fun for all the family to come up there and enjoy. So uh, we're hoping to make this a showcase for the year for Indian Head Park. And if it's a success, we'll build on it in future years. Any questions? Yes, Trustee Metz here. Um, the, the date of this is when? April 29th. April 29th, just so just a little over two months from now. Um, how many vendors are signed up at this point and who would the vendors be? I don't have a list of the vendors. I have to acknowledge <clears throat> publicly that Kate Boyle, who's on the committee and lives in Ashbrook, has done a yeoman's task of calling and getting vendors. At our last meeting, which was about six weeks ago, and Sean, were you at that meeting? Tom, you were at that meeting. I think she had six or eight, and since then we've picked up another two. Our goal is to have a minimum of 15. And what if you don't reach 15? Well, then we're gonna rethink the whole event, but I, it looks like we will. Um. Yeah, and what does the fifteen thousand go for? The booth rental is thirteen thousand. What kind of booth are we talking about? What what? Why is it? You so know, expensive? I misspoke there. They're they're tents, um, so there'll be a big tent up there under which all the vendors will uh, have tables and chairs to um, show their wares and their goods, um, and then we'll have a, a stage and a half a tent for uh, to cover the music. Yeah, the, I know LaGrange does art fair, an art fair at least once a year, and all the vendors bring their own pop-up tents. Um, you know, Brenda did mention that to me today. I um, was unaware of that, and we'll certainly look into it. But I think for our first event, we want to have the control over how it looks, and um, we want to make it look sharp. Yeah, so, but, you know, like the, uh, like the uh, holiday winter fest you were looking at, I'm, a, I'm against this because it's so close to the actual date and things are not very uh, not very firm here at this point. Um, it's just up in the air. 
you don't know how many vendors, um, and to pay fifteen thousand dollars to have um, people display their arts and crafts and sell them, um, it just doesn't uh, just doesn't seem right to me. It seems like not a good use of our village funds. Uh, there, well, are, uh, there are other ways we could say, spend fifteen thousand. I would think. Uh, um, it's just too, there's not enough details. I, if I remember right, just several months ago for the tree committee, you wanted resumes of volunteers to be on that committee. Um, you wanted details. <laughs> for this, I want details uh, um, to spend that kind of, that, that kind of uh, those kinds of funds. So um, let me say this to that. And um, it was as of six weeks ago we had those vendors, and I've been out of town the entire time since then, so I apologize. I have not checked in with uh, with the two people who, especially Kate, who's uh, getting those yeah. those vendors. Do, but, do you know um, what those that vendors? That will be definitely provided okay. to you ASAP. The vendors that are there. Do you know what they are, or what what kind? What? Yeah, there are various vendors: some candle makers, uh, Irish, um, you know, goods, sweaters, things like that. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what other ones are there. Uh, flowers, uh, to, um, vendors will be there. Um, artificial um, flowers, jewelry, vendors will be there. Um, Eileen, I believe uh, Heather and Vine will be there. There are four shops close to the Triangle, or in the Triangle, but close to Indian Head Plaza. Right. Yes, and they'll then, be there. Um, how about Capri and... Um, Wolf's Head have, uh, in fact, all of the stores up there are really quite excited about it. Capri and um, Wolf's Head are particularly excited about it and will be opening up their doors and uh, selling food and beverages to the people at the... Uh, so we're not going to have beverage and food vendors there because we feel like we want them to use the restaurants that are already there. Yeah, if, if you got the 15 that you would like to have... Um, we're talking about $866 per vendor that we are paying, and I guess you have a $35 fee for them to enter. Um, so we're, we're paying an awful lot of money if that's the case. If you don't even get 15, then we're you know we could be paying over $1,000 per per vendor I, from our I funds. Don't think that, I don't uh, think that that's the way you look at what we're spending the money on. We're spending the money on marketing the village and getting families up there together. I mean. The Economic Development Committee, since its inception in 2018, has been all about trying to make that a family-friendly uh, place. And, you know, this is a step in that direction. We also hope it will, um, as you may know, we've been talking with the owner of the, um, of the strip mall up there and trying to get him to improve it. And I think the more he sees people coming up there, the easier it's going to be to talk to him about that. Yeah, I, I agree with bringing people together, having a family event. That's that's terrific. But I think we need we need more facts here. We need more um, something more tangible to go on, other than this is what we want to do. And if we don't get there, we're not gonna we're not gonna have it. It's just it, it's uh, at this it, you know a little less than, or a little more than two months away. Um, this should be much further along. I well, mean, you know, we have the music. We have the um, all the other um, elements to it, and we have more than half the vendors. So I, I don't see a problem with getting there. But like I say, within the next week or so, I'll have them to you. Well, I, mean, I could understand having $1,500, $1,000 for your music and $500 for your children's activities, maybe another 500 for your for your signs and banners. That'd be two grand. And have people bring their own tents, do their own pop-ups, and save us $13,000. Eileen, if I'm understanding, uh, if this is approved uh, next month, the village board would be asked to approve, um, I think it's the open carry for alcohol that we have for special events like we've done yeah. for the car show. Is that right. correct? Thank you. Yeah. Um, Eileen, can I ask a question? This is Sean. Um, and I apologize. I know I missed the last meeting. I had an engagement with uh, my youngest at LT. Um, April 29th. Are we? Is this going to be on what is considered the dome property as well as the parking lot? Is was that the plan? Yes. 
What if, uh, you know, right now that dome property parking lot or that grassy area is mush? It's a swamp land. Do we have a contingent plan in the event that weather is an issue? Do we just uh, move yeah, to the parking I lot 100%? I think we have looked at the parking lot, and there's more than enough room up there to accommodate, even if we're not on the grass. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, Eileen, I have one question. In the packet, we've got uh, what I'd call two flyers. One says it's two to eight, and the other says two to six, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what we said at the economic development meeting. Do you recall? I wasn't aware that the flyers were attached to that. Um, I believe it's two to eight. I, I can speak to that one. So Thank you. This is Andy Eileen. Um, the the two to six flyer is for handing to the vendors because the idea I think was to have the vendors there from two to six, but oh, the, yeah, but the two to eight yeah. flyer is for attendees or residents because um, the idea was to I think keep the music and stuff going a bit later mm -hmm. than six. And maybe go out to dinner at one of our. Yeah, there you go. Thank so. you, Andy. All right, other questions or comments. Who seconded this motion? Charlie. Oh, Sean did. I Sean, did thank I... you, Sean. Yep, Eileen and Sean. Okay. Um, roll call vote, please. Uh, Trustee Donnersberger. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Trustee Metz. No. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Thank you. All right, that's been approved, and I believe uh, Eileen will be uh, leaving the uh, meeting uh, due to travel plans, so safe travels, Eileen. Thank you very much. Good luck with the rest of the meeting. Okay, uh, first reading of the budget. Last item under new business. This is me. This is not me. That's me. That's you. All right, so this is the first reading of the budget for the 23-24 fiscal year. Um, we have three readings of the budget. At our next meeting, we will have the second reading, obviously, in the public hearing, and we will pass this at the April board meeting. So the village, again, um, revenues are coming in a little bit higher than expected. Expenses are a little bit lower than expected. So we expect the, to end the fiscal year in a very positive note. We started the framework for the budget, um, and I will just cover revenues very briefly, and then we'll talk about expenses uh, briefly after that. Hopefully I can do this in about five minutes. Um, again, the, balance, the budget is balanced. That means that revenues will meet or exceed um, expenses. Um, we expect to end the fiscal year uh, with about a little bit over $2 million in the bank. Um, we do have a, an informal ca uh, cash reserve policy for operating funds. Um, that leaves us about $1.5 uh, million um, to spend in addition to expected revenue for the fiscal year. Um, as a matter of policy, we have, when we have a capital project, we use cash on hand for that so we don't go to the debt market for capital projects. Um, and our policy has kind of worked well for us this year. Um, as you know, Cook County was delaying uh, distribution of property taxes for several months. Uh, we are now getting those in, but we had adequate cash reserves to weather that storm. And although Cook County did offer interim financing, there were some expenses with that, and that didn't make sense to the village, so we c actually came out ahead on that. Um, revenues are going to stay about the same um, in, in the projections. We're going to have a little bit more revenue this year in some of the state uh, revenues, but we're using a conservative base, basis for revenue projections, and we use the Illinois Municipal League and their financial projections. So, uh, for instance, um, we're going to take in about $660,000 in, in state income tax. That's on a per capita basis uh, next year, but this year, but we're looking at $633,000 for the new fiscal year. Again, we try to be close, uh, and I would rather 
project less revenues, and if we get more, all the better for the village. Um, gaming taxes uh, will take in about $145,000 uh, this year. We're backing off to $135,000 next year. Statewide gaming revenues seem to have leveled off uh, as cannabis revenues has. So we do get cannabis revenue. Uh, that's on a per capita basis. We don't have any cannabis facilities in the village. So that is like seven grand, I think, or six grand for, for uh, cannabis revenue. That's kind of it on, on revenues. Um, so all told, we should take in for the general and special funds about $6 million um, combined for the new fiscal year, including uh, cash available. Um, on the expense side, we're talking uh, with the board about setting goals, but for the general operating expenses, um, the president and village board have their own line item that remains about the same. Um, again, for the operations of the village, the admin side, um, we're staying pretty much flat with uh, the current budget, although there will be some increases for staff salaries that we'll talk about in closed session. Um, again, building department is somewhat self-funding from building permits, uh, planning and zoning, um, just a few thousand dollars for planning and zoning. Uh, public works on the operating side, um, salaries are just over $200,000. Um, about the same as projected for this year. Um, and uh, pretty much the budget carries over from the, the prior year. We have money set aside for a vehicle purchase or we'll start saving for a new vehicle. We have a truck that is coming that's being outfitted as we speak that's budgeted for this fiscal year. Uh, as you know, trucks are rather costly in the neighborhood of $60,000. On the police department side, um, we are looking for a COPS grant. Um, the, the Justice Department will help fund um, new officers uh, to the tune of 75% of their total compensation, and it is a three-year grant with a four-year commitment. Um, we will not fund or hire the officer until we have grant funding in place. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? So it's sounding to me like we're going to have 75% of a new officer's total okay. cost Correct. taken care of by, by the feds, by the federal government for three years. And then we have to have that officer with us for four years. So entering the fourth year, we will have to have fund that accordingly, but we have, yeah. I'm looking at attrition in, in the years, potentially year four. So we would be just, covering that moving okay hmm. again that is a grant we're applying for uh if we don't get the grant we will not be hiring the additional officers when, when you say grant how does that come in john does it say uh, uh, just for round numbers does it say 750 we can do 10 officers um how does how does that work we go by we look to fund an officer so we're looking to fund two officers okay so that's what we're asking for right. and and that's in the budget and again if we don't get the grant we won't be spending the money. Um, we're looking to increase um, some of our IT in the police department. There are some new FBI regulations uh, that we have to comply with for security. So we're already doing that in this budget. We'll be carrying it over into the new fiscal budget. Um, in the special funds area, uh, we participate in the CSPAR uh, the Special Recreation District, that's self-funding that was voted in a while ago, that's $23,000, and that has its own tax revenue. Uh, motor fuel tax, again, we're using um, estimates from the Illinois Municipal League, and we get MFT money on a per capita basis. Uh, we also have, in the special funds, we have a, a gasoline tax uh, that's allowed to non-home rural communities in Cook County. That's three th cents a gallon. Uh, we estimate about $25,000 in revenue if memory serves. And that has to be used for ro the road program. On the water department, um, we're looking to get about $1.7 million in, in revenue. 
uh, for the new year. Uh, we have over a million dollars in cash reserves in, um, in the water department already that we're gonna be using to help fund the um, pump station improvements. And then we have also have capital spending in the water department. So we have adequate funds for two years. We might have to borrow a little bit from the general fund. Um, and that will be paid back with an interest rate to be determined by the board at that time. But it would be a short term funding mechanism of maybe a year beyond the two years uh, for the construction of the budget or construction of the project. Um, again, nothing big in the water department as far as um, construction except for the pump house. That's going to be taking all of our efforts. Uh, we'll probably be foregoing any water main formal replacement of the water mains as with the exception of Joliet Road and Roofers Road, which is under design right now. Um, and pardon? And, and emergencies, emergencies, of course. That's got its own separate line item. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in water main breaks, so we're going to have to, after the pump house, we're going to have to start looking at our water main replacement program again. And again, we always look for grant funding for, for projects of this nature. We just didn't get grant funding or loan funding for the, for the pump house. That is uh, the budget in general. We have about $700,000 that the board is going to be voting on for special projects. Uh, that does not include about $350,000 for our road program, which is kind of, it's a permanent part of the budget. We try to do, uh, now it's 10% of our roads every year, as we found that roads last about 10 years. Um, and that's a repaving. Um, other than that, um, we'll work more in detail at the public hearing, but you have a balanced budget and we're doing stuff. Um, and I think that the board has always been rather conservative in, in their spending. Um, and, and we have the <coughs> financial resources that, that reflect that. And we're meeting the needs of, of the community. John, thank you very much. That was a good summary. Thank you to the staff as well. Any questions or comments for John? And we have uh, this, like you said, that this is the first of three. Yes. And we have what, two more finance committee meetings? Correct. And those are open meetings if anybody interested in coming. All right, thank you. Um, you're done, right? Well, unless if anybody has questions of me. I've been, this is my 34th, 35th budget. So I just kind of get used to it. Um, I live this. Um, so if you have any questions of me, please ask. I, I, I just don't mean to drone on. Um, but this is, I, I love this kind of stuff, especially when we have a balanced budget. I don't have to worry about payroll being met. Uh, apparently at one time we did. Um, so we are in an excellent financial position, and I'm very happy about that. So. We, we love that you love this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, John, thank you again. Uh, moving along, uh, trustees, uh, Charlie, I will uh, ask you to start going around the uh, dais, please. Anything to report? Uh, just a question for staff. Uh, we had initiated a study of the uh, Indian Head Park uh, space and facilities. I think that actually started. Do we have a uh, expectation uh, when that will you be You will completed? get the report at the end of this month for discussion at the board at the March board meeting. Thank you. No, that's it. Thank you. Rita. I just had a question about the uh, study that was done of the Heritage Center and the other village facilities. Are, have we, when is that going to come up for approval from the uh, board? That was facility study? <laughs> oh, that's the same thing. I'm sorry. Never mind. I know we're, we're talking, we're going it's long. It's late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we'll get the report, and we may have comments and questions, so right. we're not going to necessarily do anything in March, but we'll get the report. Okay, so. great. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Brenda? Yes. So Indian Head Park Police is planning for the National Night Out, which is an annual community building campaign that promotes police community partnerships and neighborhood camaraderie to make our neighborhoods safer, more caring places to live. Uh, millions of neighbors take part in the National 
night out across thousands of communities from all 50 states, U.S. territories, and military bases worldwide on the first Tuesday in August. National Night Out enhances the relationship between neighbors and the law enforcement while bringing back a true sense of community. Furthermore, it provides a great opportunity to bring the police and neighbors together under positive circumstances. This year, National Night Out is Tuesday, August 1st, and more information will be coming. The other thing that I would like to, to bring up is we have our 2023 Community Garden, Garden Meeting, which will be this coming Monday, February 13th, here at the Village Hall at 6.30. Right now, we have 18 plots that are taken, and we have two remaining plots if anybody is interested. Uh, it's $100 for a plat if you are a new member to the community. And that is all I have. And, and you said new to the community. I think you mean new to the- uh, Garden Committee. Garden, community. yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Trustee Metz? Uh, all I have is the Finance Committee. We'll be meeting again Monday, February 27th. Is that correct, John? 6 p.m. Um, hope to see you there. Thank you. Trustee Kennedy? Yes, thank you. I actually have quite a bit. I apologize because I know tonight's going to be a long meeting. But uh, um, Landscaping Tree Committee, we had a meeting on January 30th. Uh, a few things that were discussed. One is the status of Plainfield Road work, uh, tollway work uh, that happens to affect Keokuk down in that area. We had sent them letter, video statements of issues down there we got a reply that i think was a little bit inadequate in my opinion um one question it looks like it was answered if i'm reading this correctly we we, we didn't know who owned or who who was going to take care of that area if it was county or if it was tollway the tollway is the one that's kind of destroyed it because of the construction but it appears per their letter that it's the county so as I'm reading this, it looks like the tollway is going to do, in my opinion, a bare minimum to fix that. And we're going to have to really go to the county to try to get more to get it to where we would like it. If I have that wrong at all, please. And that would be part of the uh, Plainfield Road work uh, as they do that connecting up to the bridge. Yeah, I th so it, it looks like it started because of the tollway construction that... Plainfield Bridge is definitely part of, but it looks like it won't be finalized until Plainfield is done, which I don't think we want to wait that long because if they're in phase one, that's years away. Um, so more to come on that, and we're going to keep pushing. Um, we also discussed vacuum versus composting. Um, I reached out to other villages to find out what they're doing. Um, more of a green way to approach that along with item three was gas powered electric or gas powered versus electrical landscaping equipment same thing i've reached out um it looks like from our meeting basically what we came up with was just trying to educate the village more people trying to do more compost co composting on their own um using electrical equipment as opposed to gas powered um Identifying areas of buckthorn removal. So one of the committee mem members, Frank Sabalis, um, who really loves this stuff, has been f working with a number of different ways to get rid of the buckthorn and then also vegetation to plant over the buckthorn to make sure it doesn't come back. Um, he's also taken upon himself to enroll in a um, class at Morton Arboretum and, and act N-ACT, Natural Area Conversation Training Program. Uh, one of the topics in there is uh, invasive species management. So he's really stepped up and come to the forefront of let's get rid of this buckthorn that we have in the village and, and keep it down once and for all. Uh, the last item that we talked about, and I think this was probably the one that we had the most conversations on, was, um, as, as residents may or may not know, Don, our local arborist in the back, started a tree farm at Public Works a year or two ago now. Um, we're looking to expand that. We were trying to come up with locations. Two locations that were brought up were the northeast corner of Wolf and Joliet, which is actually owned by IDOT, but we're thinking that if we reach out to them, they're not doing anything with it. I don't think they have plans to do anything with it. 
one of the things that I brought up that I was in favor of is, is to try to make the tree farms, if we add tree farms, to make them visible to the community. We want people to see it. You can always go back to public, public works and see it, but I know nobody goes back to public works to see it. So that was one area. And then what we call Arrowhead Point, the southeast corner of Plainfield and Wolf Road. Uh, so more to come on that. Also, I'd like to take a few minutes. The board members, I gave a packet, and I think, Dave, you've got the uh, some of the slides. But um, talking to community members in the last few weeks, Wolf Road has been a, a topic that gets the most attention, has the most questions. Um, and I thought I would take this opportunity to just kind of reiterate some of the things that we know right now at this stage. Um, it just so happens that Matt is here tonight. So Matt, if I have any of this wrong, please uh, let me know. But I took this information from the presentation that they did back in June of 2022 at Highlands. So these slides that we're looking at are right from that presentation. Um, before I go into the slide, the first thing that I wanted to, to hit was I sent an email to Matt on the 26th of January to refresh my memory on the five lanes. Essentially, the five lanes was an um, option solely because the county is looking to get federal funding from the government for this project. And based on the road study that we did, or traffic study that we did, the federal government required that we had this as one of the options. Nobody in the village that was involved with it was for it. Engineering was not for it. And the county has come out and said that they're not for it. Like Plainfield Road, where it has essentially been eradicated from their um, proposal, I think that we're very close to the same thing happening here. So five lanes, most likely, absolutely not going to happen. Um, and that is definitely one of the first questions that I, I was getting. Um, truck traffic. I know that we're taking some steps. Today we talked about signs potentially putting up in, internally in the community. What, if anything, can we do for the county roads? It doesn't sound like much. Um, our truck traffic, although when we do have an issue, it becomes highlighted. I get it. I had reached out to Chief Koenig um, to get some studies from the traffic cameras that we have up. And um, the data that he had was from January 9th to February 9th of this year. We had just under 309,000 different license plates. 502 were semi slash box trucks. So it is a very, very, very small amount of traffic on Wolf Road on a monthly basis right now. I don't think anybody that is involved with this project right now thinks that that is going to expand for the simple fact that the lanes as they stand right now are 12 feet in width and they will be going to 11 feet on the proposed plan right now so they're actually be getting narrower um the county also said that they were going to work with cmap which is the chicago metropolitan area planning committee to make sure that before final steps are taken that they sign off on it and agree or disagree that that is the case. So more to come on, on truck traffic. Um, drainage is another one that was coming up quite often. The next slide, Dave. Um, we have an open ditch system right now, not really a way to control it. Water comes off the road into the ditch, into people's backyards or front yards, depending on their homes, um, and it just travels on down the road. As it, it stands right now, that will be a curb and gutter with a underwater um, sewer system. So we'll be able to control it, mitigate it. So any water that hits Wolf Road right now is not going to flow into somebody's yard. It's gonna go into a gutter underground on down the road. So we do not, anticipate any drainage concerns um, getting worse going forward. Yes, Trustee Eck. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, my understanding is with the, um, uh, the creation of the PIP and the CAC that, uh, and the modification to the uh, agreement that we have now with the county, uh, isn't, aren't all of these items really kind of maybes now rather than? Uh, no, the, the items right now are, are, are what the engineering has in front of them now. Can things change? Absolutely. Okay. But it, this is just the information that we have now. So again, when somebody comes up to me and says, why are we doing five lanes? Most likely not going to happen. You know, why, why, why are we doing this? Or, you know, the, the expansion of the road. Again, we're going from a 12 foot lanes to 11. Um, 
expansion of the overall project, uh, currently 60 feet from edge of ditch. So, so this is just an explanation of, of the existing? It's, it's reiterating system. what is. But it's not cast in concrete. It can, Absolutely all, all not. All of this can change. No, it's, this is just trying to, again, educate the, some of the misconceptions that we might be hearing out there from constant contact with our neighbors and things. It's, it's the way it is right now. The expansion is not going to be drastic. The, the, again, the, the ditch to ditch is 60 feet. If we, as it is designed right now, which yes, it can change, it would go from edge of sidewalk to edge of bike path, it would be 61 feet. That is not a gigantic expansion is the point. Um, so it's just, again, reiterating the information that we have right now. Um, I talked about the, the this, so as, just as a recap, five lanes, most likely not gonna happen. Uh, currently we have low truck traffic. We don't anticipate that getting any worse. Again, the county is gonna work with CMAP as the project goes on to make sure that that doesn't change. Drainage improvements with curb and gutter system will, be follow, will follow the IDOT and MWRD standards. Um, we'll have expected no negative impact on any neighbors that live along the Wolf Road corridor. Um, I talked about the, the width and the size of the roads. Uh, we talked about landscaping earlier. It was interesting that the 80,000 that we did last year, that seems as though the, the request for the number went up substantially, so I think people should be happy about that. Um, and lastly, with the tree and landscaping committee, with the um, uh, tree farms that we talked about, that is for the whole village, but I. I, I, my expect, expectation would be that majority of those would be used for this and the tollway project uh, first and foremost, and then eventually throughout the, the rest of the village. So there is definitely a focus from this board as it sits right now to not change the overall tree company through that corridor as much as possible. So, so. I do have a question in regards yep. to what you said, that the tollway was not gonna be held responsible for anything. Uh, I did receive an email from John DeRosha on February 8th, and he says that the tollway is responsible for all restoration. Oh, I don't think I said they weren't gonna be held responsible. I think the you letter that it, they you sent- You said it was for the, count, the county was gonna be responsible for- Well, that was the letter that Sharon sent us saying that they were saying it's the county, which I interpreted as they're trying to push it off on them. I mean, irregardless or regardless, I think we're gonna hold both entities responsible for replacing it. Ultimately, if the tollway says it's not ours, it's owned by them, then we deal yeah, with the what county. About, what about the village property? I mean, we have going along Keokuk in the French Road. Oh, I don't think there's any question that the village would take care of their own no, property. No. I think the tollway should be taking care of that because they're the ones that tore it all apart. If it's, if it's owned by the village and not by the county, the tollway should be taking care of it. If the tollway damaged it, the tollway has to fix it. Yeah, and I thought sh she may have mentioned that in there or may have been misremembering that. But yeah, I, I don't think there's a question that both entities involved will have a stake and we will continue to push on that. I mean, they're the ones that tore it up. No, I just want to make it. it clear because yeah. in the beginning of, of your conversation, you said that the to toy was not going to. Uh, take care of anything, it was all gonna be the county. All right, if I said that I misspoke, that was not my intention at all, no. Anything else, Sean? Nope, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Um, village clerk, anything to report? Thank you, village treasurer. Thank you, village attorney. No report. Village administrator. Um, stormwater management, this is a monthly report for me. So we received a new uh, request uh, today through our online portal, uh, there's a residence on Hiawatha that is actually getting water in their basement. Uh, so Public Works will be going out on uh, February 14th to look at the property. Uh, this is somewhat unique. It's a newer home in the village and they do have some stormwater issues. So we're gonna be looking at that. One thing that I did notice is they have a, a beehive drain in their backyard that it appears to be above the water level that's pounding in their backyard, so perhaps they need to lower uh, that manhole. Uh, John, we, you're looking. You're referencing a report. Is that in the board packet? I believe it is. Um, it was, but there is a maybe not the a, new item. The new item, but this today. is something the board right. gets, and we try to make this public Correct. as uh, often as we can. 
so this is a you're going through the summary of the report correct the main thing though is if you have a stormwater runoff issue in, in your yard let us know and we will respond we'll go out we might not have an answer for you but we will respond and try to help you with a correction sometimes it's our fault uh, usually not but if it is we'll make the correction and then we can offer advice uh, to help ameliorate uh, stormwater issues in, in somebody's yard before you go off that a lot of the ones on the report are what we have termed as a nuisance a swampy backyard Correct. and uh, I think that the discussions we briefly touched it as one of the village goals was that could be a village goal to fund some partnership with the resident and us uh, I have my views on that but that's where that might come in for the swampy backyard correct uh, we have offered assistance uh, there was somebody on uh, Thunderbird Drive uh, two years ago where or a year and a half ago where they had a very swampy backyard we helped them uh, connect to a storm sewer in in the right-of-way so we paid for that portion that was in the right-of-way and the homeowner worked with their neighbors and they uh, diverted water from one flow point to another and that seemed to help their, their issue so we will work with the owner um, as much as we can and if it's in the right-of-way we will address it ourselves thank you and I think that is all I have unless if you have you have street signs and village sign do you want to hit those uh, or no I trying? completely forgot about that so <laughs> no um, the village hall sign is out for bid so it's on our website uh, we are looking to replace the village hall sign with a sign similar to what we have at Arrowhead Point and on street signs we will be doing a mock-up I actually have displays in front of village hall we've ordered them so we're going to be doing a community survey to help choose street signs for the village and these were like the signs we had in the back for a couple months here in this room we're going to get those put in in front of village hall so people can actually see the various signs and our survey would be going out to say here's one a white background with black letters and a brown black ground with white letters and you can drive by and take a look at them i'm assuming those will also be online too for people to look yeah. at yeah but rather than have put that one up in a neighborhood where you might not know where it is, they're going to be in front of Village Hall. All right, anything else, John? That's it, sir. Assistant Village Administrator, Andy? Yeah, a few, few quick items. Um, a couple of uh, waste hauling, SVC upper dates. Uh, first, and this will all be online too, so you don't have to remember all this, um, but the free yard waste period will be the weeks of march 27th and then the week of Mar of april 3rd you'll be able to put out yard waste for free uh, and then we will also have a spring cleanup day which is the week of april 10th uh, during that uh, week on your garbage pickup day you can put out uh, up to five cubic yards of waste material for three stickers and for reference, uh, five cubic yards is roughly equivalent to 10 95-gallon toters. Um, so please take advantage of that. What's that date again? And that date is the week of April 10th. Um, so it's going to be that Friday for most people. Um, and then the final thing is April 15th is going to be our third annual uh, electronics and paint recycling event. And you'll also be able to... Uh, bring documents to be shredded and the only other quick thing I have is uh, congratulations and a thank you to uh, Michael Barnes on Hiawatha uh, Michael submitted our winning uh, photo for a fall photo contest you can see it hanging up uh, in the back it's a very beautiful picture of Hiawatha uh, in the fall and right now we are in uh, winter submission period and um, I think next month we'll have an update about um, potential winner there we'll, once we get all the submissions we'll send that out for a survey as well so approximately how many photos did you get is it hundreds thousands mm, dozens dozens tens dozens tens. thank yeah. you that, the picture looks much better than the one you use to advertise the contest it does <laughs> <Much better. laughs> Is, 
size of it, or did you put it together? Like no, so we, um, like, they submitted a f any photo from their phone or whatever, uh, and then we put those on the survey, and then the winner, we, we blew it up and, yeah. and put it on the canvas. So that's all I have. Thank you. Andy, police department, chief. Thank you for being very patient in the back. Yes. I've been married 42 years. So, so uh, we're still waiting on an IDOT permitting. Uh, supposedly, according to Flock and Vigilant, it's moving along, but we're still waiting. Uh, we do have, Dave, if you can throw those up for me. And when you say waiting, you're talking about the license plate reading Permit. cameras, yes, correct? Yes, the permitting. Yeah. So we just partnered with Cook County for a drug collection. Uh, they provided this type of a mailbox, for lack of better terms, which is now just in the front lobby of the police department. And they'll take care of cleaning it up, uh, taking out uh, the drugs on a periodic basis. And it's very simple to operate, just like the mailboxes that we used to see on the corner. Sean? Prescription drugs. Prescription drugs. Like any kind. Any kind, anything but sharps and liquid. So no uh, hypodermic needles, no uh, cough medicine. So just drink that up yourself at home some night and <laughs> go to bed early. <laughs> uh, body cams, you mentioned cameras. Uh, body cameras are uh, rolling out here pretty soon. I shouldn't say pretty soon. Um, AIS, our IT company, they've completed their work internally for setting up the server. Uh, WatchGuard is coming out the end of February to do their final installation of software. And we just got the last squad car back from our upfitter who had to do some additions to our squad car cameras to blend the videos into one. That's one of the highlights of the why we stayed with WatchGuard this time around. That's all I have. Any questions? So the last few years, we've seen cameras, uh, cameras, cameras uh, in the car, uh, on the street, hopefully, uh, when we get IDOT approval, and soon to be body-worn cameras, right? Correct. And we have uh, cameras in the buildings and internal cameras, right? Uh, unfortunately, un fortunately, unfortunately, our DVD broke. It has been broke off and on for the last six months, and it finally went to DVD heaven. Um, and seventeen thousand dollars it costs us to replace it with the new software fortunately we didn't have to replace all of our cameras because some of our cameras on the building internally down at public works were already digital so we only had to upgrade four cameras i believe so that uh, much more user friendly as far as the software much more uh, convenient to use and to search for things so th that is definitely making uh, life easier when we do have to record a video for the state's attorney's office thank you very much any questions comments for chief thank you sir okay um public comments correct any public comments public works oh very sorry sir thank you uh to the ladies in the back I need all the help I can get. Don, sorry about that. That's okay. Very no, sorry, sir. We just came to, uh, in case of any backup for anything for the station or anything. Uh, but uh, Public Works, uh, we're glad there's hardly any snow this <laughs> winter. Uh, makes it easier on all of us. Uh, yeah, all right. But um, yeah, so we're getting the garage, really working in the garage a lot and getting tools in order and uh, getting stuff ready for the spring, so it's about. Thank you for the work that you and the crew did for the snows that we had. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah and thanks Pepe and Pedro for. I saw them out this morning, breaking leaves out of yeah. drain sewers. Yep, yep. Instead of at least it wasn't a foot of snow; it was right. an inch of rain. So hey, Don, if you wouldn't mind, uh, on the snow we have high priority. You know, we have a system that we work through, and like sidewalks are at the bottom. Like we do hills first and major intersections. Could you run through that briefly? Put you on the spot? Well, yeah, we have our uh, first, second, third priority, yeah, and, uh, exactly the hills and the, uh, uh, our, our, and the main arteries, uh, well, the main out, out, out to the neighborhoods are the first streets we get. Uh, 
cul-de-sacs and and the sidewalks are the last things we get in the in the, in the park and uh, I go around with the John Deere and and get those last the, the sidewalks but um, yeah main entrances to subdivisions are the, the main things that we do and the hills thank you for the uh, pop quiz sure. any questions or comments for Don and Public Works and thank you again ladies in the back uh, other uh, included in the board packet. I think that's the uh, thing that we send to the assessor. Okay, now public comments. Yes, please come to the microphone. Well, my comment is regarding, my name is Carol Adamski and I live in Indian Ridge Condos. I'm in unit, uh, building number one, backed up to Wolf Road and right on the entrance of our complex. I contacted Mr. DeRocher regarding the semis that are coming through and regarding to new business number letter E. Uh, we have 16 and 18 wheelers coming through our complex for no apparent reason. On January 17th, we had one that jackknifed crossing mm -hmm. Wolf Road. And as he jackknifed, he, he couldn't do anything with it. So cars were going north and south around this big tractor trailer blocking all the lanes of traffic. It's not just an occasional one. Tuesday evening this, this week, we had another one coming out and there's 16 and 18 wheeler trucks. There's no reason when I spoke to the truck driver that day, he, and I, inadvertently, I didn't know who he was. He said his trucker's GPS told him that when he missed his turn, he should come in. My patio windows look at the entrance and Wolf Road and sitting there i never saw a truck heading south on wolf Ro i'm sorry north on wolf road which would have meant he missed a turn went into acacia drive onto algonquin and came back out on wolf road and was heading south so where did he come from and this happens all the time we have trucks sometimes two and three and four a week and different hours of the day. They're in the daytime, they're in the morning, they're in the afternoon, they're Tuesday evening, it was six o'clock in the dark. And he had to sit there and wait to try to cross those lanes of traffic. So it is, we appreciate, I'm the building director for Indian Ridge Condos, and we appreciate our brand new streets of the last couple of years. And we take pride in what we do with our buildings. So we really would appreciate any help we can get with signage or whatever it takes to keep those trucks out of our complex. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Back up again. I think it was said, Sandy Hayes, Cochise Drive, 6634. I think it was said that there were over a month period there were 549 trucks that came up and down wolf road it's 549 too many number one and once you expand the roads to make it more accessible you're going to have a thousand up and down that road thank you thank you mrs says anybody else yes jim Just uh, 10 more minutes, just kidding. Uh, Jim Gaz is 6520 Wolf Road, just really quick. Uh, John, Duro, sure, uh, I appreciate what you've done with, on the Finance Committee, getting those other uh, firms involved. Trustee Kennedy, your point is well taken, conflicts of interest, appearance of impropriety, we can't really have that. My question would be, why can't we just kind of go to Wintrust as Wintrust has already approved prior to, and kind of, again, not negotiate against themselves, but say, hey, look, this is what's going on, do a little better. Uh, and again, I'd be willing to help as uh, somebody without a dog in the fight and in finance as well. Uh, be happy to volunteer your time. Uh, the other quick thing, Wolf Road, uh, this is more of a chief question, being on Wolf Road, living on Wolf Road, being at the South Acacia entrance on the west side in the Circle Drive, people coming down Franz Hill at all hours of the day, five in the morning, eight in the morning, rush hour. Yes, they're going on the, on the parkways to kind of get around there but it's the speed limit the speed i know it's posted i know it's county and i know it's 35 and you guys know we've lost several mailboxes walls trees uh been an adventure over there but that goes with the territory what can we do about the speed enforcing that speed limit and i, I know uh, mayor hinshaw and i uh you know we don't necessarily want to be ticketing our own residents but i don't think it's our residents that are peeling through there at 45 50 miles an hour coming down Franz Hill going south and then 
having to you know basically lock them up before they get to Joliet Road. So uh, more of a chief question. I'd be happy to volunteer the driveway if you want to put <laughs> you know one of those fake police cars in there or a truck that doesn't work. We can park it there. We'll use the other entrance. But uh, if we could slow down that traffic, I think it would. Uh, you know, eliminate a lot of safety issues we have on that road currently. Thank you. He was writing as you were speaking. Jim, Jim, do, you, Jim do you own a do you own a hair dryer to stand out there with a the hair hair? It might slow him down. Uh, Jim, thank you. So when the chief hears a complaint about speeding, uh, he tells the staff, and then they're alerted to the complaint. And we also have one of those uh, cameras. Uh, no, not. Uh, radar detector that posts the speed that I know we move around the village. So we have a couple things that we do do when we have incidents of speeding, but thank you. Any other comments? Diane Michael, 111 Acacia Drive. Thank you. That's all I have to say is thank you very much. It's been a long time coming and I appreciate it. And we're going to do everything we can to make it look pretty for our residents so they don't even realize it's there just so that it's a peace of mind for our building to have in the event that something catastrophic happens. And I appreciate the, the time and diligence that you took for it. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Anybody else? Okay, I don't see any. Um, would somebody like to make a motion to go to closed session? I'll make a motion to go to closed section pursuant to Five ILCS 122C1 collective bargaining per five ILCS 120-2C2 and review of closed session minutes per five ILCS 120-2C21. I'll second. Thank you, Sean and Rita. All in favor, say aye. 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 What? Oh, sorry. Roll call vote, please. My apologies. There's still all eyes. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Hennedy. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. She's gone, right? She's, she's, yes. She's yes. gone. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Trustee Donnersberger. She's Eck. gone, yes. I, I'm sorry. Trustee Eck. Did I say Trustee Eck? Yes. Eck is uh, yes. Trustee Metz and Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. <laughs> okay. okay. Meeting is adjourned at 921. Thank you. <laughs>